Hello producers, it's Özgün here. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make bigger drops, how to make your big room drops sound more big in terms of mix down. And I'm gonna demonstrate some of my techniques, how I make my sounds bigger in the world's cheesiest big room drops that I just made for the sake of this tutorial. And also guys, thanks for amazing support on the Hooked. When I'm shooting the video, we are at the top 24 in the Beatport. Let's push it more, at least to the top 10 will be amazing. And thanks for your support. I'm gonna give the hooked sample pack next week to the people who joined to the channel so maybe you can just check the tiers and choose which one is the best for you and there will be hooked walkthrough video we are gonna show you the project and make a walkthrough video of it in next week okay this much info is enough if you're ready let's get into that tutorial okay guys for the tutorial I have a track like this I made it in like 10 minutes or something I used most of the Kevo samples and I put a MIDI from it let's show you the track first So as you hear, it's really basic, but it contains all the fundamental, all the essential sounds that it must have. We have percussions, we have claps, maybe we add some hi-hats to the second drop as well. But overall, we have everything we need. So how we made this drop more powerful in terms of mixing? Today we are gonna focus on this. So let's start with the kick. It sounds, I think, really good. But I'm sure we can make it even better. So my track is D sharp and I checked the kick and it was in A sharp. So it's the fifth of D sharp. I can use it with no problems. But again, if the kick is A sharp, so it's best if I boost some of the lows, my fundamental note. Even this is making a huge difference. And if you want more body from your kick, you can always boost 300 Hz. I love to use SSL EQ, so this kind of EQ is giving its own character. That's why I like to use them. So let's put it 300 Hz and boost it like 2 or 3 dBs. too loud it's clipping so maybe we can lower it several dbs from here okay let's compare the kick now it's really deep right okay let's hear it with the bass it's the best way to balance kick and bass checking the waveforms i was using the woo meter trick but recently i like to use this one so i can just see the waveform of it and my aim is to match the sub frequencies of the kick and the bass like in the same line now they are sound really nice but maybe we made the kick too boomy. I'm gonna go a bit lower. I think it sounds good now. So the second thing I will do to cut the highs because we don't need it in the sub. Now it's more clean, right? So I can even cut from here. Maybe we can lower the kick just a several dB. So if you start the mixing with balancing the kick and bass in terms of perfect balance, so the other parts are really easy. OK, 
Okay, we are getting some nice grab over here. The second thing, let's go to the leads. The first thing I will do is just remove the reverb from here and layer it with one more scene that can like fit nice with the first sound. So let's copy the sound and this time I'm gonna send it to the next channel and call it lead 2. Usually two or three sounds it's good for big room but you can go more. It depends on how sounds you wanna achieve. And we have to make sure the glide settings are same. You layer some sounds, it's essential to do it. And make sure both of them got no reverb or delay. Okay, so now we can just make a processing together in here. Maybe we can put some Camel Crusher to the second sound as well. So the first thing we can do, put some EQ. Maybe we can give the EQ in here. So let's cut it like 150. You don't want to clash the frequencies. Let's copy this to here as well. And now we can just color them together in here. And I like to add some novel tech character to it. Let's go for techno synth preset. It's making it so loud, so let's add some EQ and lower it like maybe six decibels and cut the lows because every distortion plugin adding some lows to it. I like to add this EQ from Waves and I like to boost the loss a bit. Let's compare with and without. And then let's add some delay and reverb. It's essential. Uh, I'm gonna use the patcher, like my own preset. If you wanna know how to make exactly this preset, I have a dedicated video for that. Interface is really basic, but it's working really nice. First, I'm gonna add the reverb. And I'm gonna sidechain it with this. Finding the sweet spot is really important, so take your time on your reverb settings. And there's tons of ways to add the, the reverb and delay, so this is my new way, how I'm approaching to it. But you can just check the start to finish series in my channel. I'm using just putting some art acoustic to here and make a sidechain with first peak controller, so it depends how you want to make it. So now we have really decent 
and bass and leads, they are sound really full now. I'm always checking the span and like I don't want to make my highs too much more than my bass. <laughs> I'm thinking to give some more saturation. That's why I'm gonna try to divide it some parts. I mean my leads. Because I think in, in the mids, we are lacking some of the warmness. And I'm always clearing my low end and adding some color. But when adding color, it's best to check with the kick and bass together. <laughs> And yeah, now they both almost fill whole spectrum. <laughs> Okay, let's add other elements. So for exhaust, it's really important when you want to make the first hit of the drop. Don't forget to sidechain your sounds. If you don't want to sidechain it too much, at least add some kickstart and make it like half. And also always cut the bass of this kind of sounds. You don't want to get conflict with the other elements in the track and also it's a really nice way a big drop impact with just making some house effect on your sound even you can just add some saturation And if you have a noise sample other than your exhaust, you can kind of do the same. Let's call it white noise. Always give it some side chain. Always cut the lows. And I like to give some reverb my noise samples. They will be more pushed to the back and like be ambient. And yeah, crowd noise. It's really important in the big room kind of drops. So I have a sample from Vengeance. I'm gonna call it Croft. Again, guys, don't forget the sidechain. We don't want anything to clash with the kick and bass. So you can always cut the lows. Maybe even some highs. And I like to make them white. This time I'm gonna use Fruit Enhancer.
Okay, for the claps, I probably not gonna do anything, but you can always do to your claps. Let me make it bigger so I can zoom further. Right now, our first transient of the kick and the claps are clashing, as you can see. They are hitting at the same time, so it's gonna affect everything in the mastering. So I will do move it just a little bit. <laughs> So the vibe is not changing, but in terms of uh, in terms of transients, the mix down is gonna be more relieved. I always put my claps a bit further, so that not clash with the kick. And for the percussions, I would always do something like this. Let's send it to some channel. First, I like to cut the lows. But I'm not cutting the bass. And if it's needed, I can just add a pretty stereo enhancer and make it narrow. Because everything in the track, my leads, my claps, some sounds, my noises are super wide. So I have some mono elements, so the white elements could make sense, if you know what I mean. Okay, let's listen them like this. Okay, let's hear how it sounds now. And lastly, I almost forgot. I think like we have a sub and the kick, but we are missing the mid bass part. So it's really important. You have to cover the mid frequencies with a mid bass. That's why I'm gonna add one more kick. Let's, if it's F sharp, so let's make it F, E, D sharp. I'm gonna make it E3 mono. Let's see if it's better. Yeah, it's more accurate. Let's process this guy before we finish the video. Trust me, it's gonna make a huge difference. So I'm gonna call it mid. The first thing I'm gonna do is give it some side chain. And I'm gonna cut the lows. But never judge this sample alone. Always check with the kick. So if I do it like this, we would have so many big gap on the spectrum. We want to fill the low mids as, as well. With and without, let's show you. And from now on, you are so free. You can add Camel Crusher if you want. Even distort it like hell, maybe we can cut some highs. And even we can make it super wide if we want, because why not? You have so much freedom on the mid part, just try to create some unique bass line.
All right, guys, today I try to show you how I process my sounds to get a bigger drops. I hope you, I can give you some perspective how to approach sounds, how to make them unique. We had a cheesiest drop in the world for the sake of this tutorial, but we at least made it sounds more full and fat. So I hope you can learn something from it and you can apply this to your own productions too. Today, that was it, guys. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Bye bye.